All right, we're back. Um, last time we made a simple script called Move My Object, which we've got right here. Um, and all that co was uh, composed of just a simple call to rotate on our transform for that object. Um, we passed in a vector, our cube speed, and time.delta time to keep things smooth and normal. Um, now we're just going to play a little bit more uh, with rotations but also transforms uh, excuse me translations uh, where we're going to be moving our object in 3d space and not just rotating so if we're gonna add one line of code um, we will we're talking to transform again um, and this time we're gonna call the translate function um, it also wants a vector but this time it sort of wants a direction vector in other words like what way in 3d space are we going to be going and I'm just going to choose vector 3, excuse me, there we go, and if you actually look through vector 3, um, you will find uh, these different unit vectors, like up and zero, right and left, stuff like that, um, and forward, and we're going to use forward, uh, and that should give us uh, essentially the relative uh, space to this object uh, direction. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about the difference between uh, local space for an object, uh, which is what this uses, and uh, global space or world space. Um, but the, the short version of it is that your objects have their own sort of x, y, z um, vectors and, um, or axes, I guess, it's better. Uh, and the world has its own x, y, z. So you know if you were looking at a map um, you know it has sort of world coordinates and then you might think of a position on that map like a person moving around as having their own coordinate system as well and when you're working in 3d that's it's pretty much the same idea so we're gonna go forward and we're gonna multiply that by cube speed again so we're reusing our code um, and also time dot delta time and we'll save that and play. Now you can see our cube flying off uh, and it's still rotating so actually it's it's uh, <laughs> gonna be going in a circle. Um, let's try to take the speed and make that a little slower. Let's make the cube speed like 4. Oops. So now as we can see it moving a little bit better you can sort of see it going, it's rotating along the, uh, the y-axis and it's also moving forward to its local um, forward vector. So it is making a circle and will in theory eventually make its way back here. Um, and this is all happening in the update function again. So um, basically each time update is called by the engine we're rotating um, at the same speed that we're translating at. If we were to say comment the rotate line out, and save and run again, you'd see that we'd actually just be moving forward. So that's a good way of um, getting a little bit of movement out of the way. Um, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, essentially these vectors. Um, one thing that's important to notice is that when you're specifying a vector, um, especially like rotate around, uh, telling it to rotate around a negative unit vector, like negative one here in this case, uh, actually doesn't change um, what's going to happen. So if we look at it again, um, we still have a rotation um, and it's rotating around it's rotating around the different uh, a different way, um, but it's still rotating around the same vector. Uh, so once again, if we go back into it, we change that to one. We can now see that it's rotating around to the right, but again, it's still the same vector. So we have our. Uh, now let's take a look at at translate. Um, we have vector three forward. Um, but it might be more interesting if we 
specify that we want to move forward only in world space. So again, we were making a circle um, otherwise, but what happens if we tell it that we want to do space dot world? Um, this is a second parameter that translate can take. And we'll go ahead and hit that. And now as you can see, it's rotating, but it's going straight no matter what. Um, this is because it's using, uh, again, the world space vector for forward and not uh, the local space. So hopefully that gives you sort of an intuition on uh, the different spaces and how they um, essentially change the operation that you're doing. So if you were writing some code and you were saying, well, I want to move forward um, if I'm holding the up arrow key, which will do something like that, um, then there's two kinds of forward. Are we moving forward relative to uh, the local axis, um, which might make sense for a car, right? Um, or are we moving forward to the world axis, axis which might make more sense for you know, a top-down shooter or something where we don't really care about the rotation um, of our character. We want to be able to, you know, shoot in every direction, but if we hit up, we want to move up relative to, say, the camera um, and that kind of thing. So that gives you a little bit more, hopefully, intuition on the different things you can do um, with rotations and translations and how they change. Um, depending upon if you're in local space or world space. And that's it for this quick lesson. Um, next time we're going to do uh, probably a little bit more with rotations because I think they're a fairly big subject. Um, and then we'll move on.